Hi guys, so I finally made it to Orlando. I'm here, just got into my room. Um, it's been a long day of traveling. My flight was pretty good, very straightforward, can't complain at all. I flew United and it was very nice. I watched a crazy movie called Keeping Up with the Joneses. It was insane and it was so funny. What's her name? The girl from um, Confessions of a Shopaholic, Isla Fisher, or Amy Adams. They kind of look alike to me. So I think it was Isla Fisher though. She stars in it and uh, she is a suburban mom married to her suburban husband and they love the new neighbors. They think they're so sexy and stylish until they find out a dark secret about him. Anyway, I won't spoil the movie, but it's definitely worth watching. Perfect airline movie. Um, so anyway, I'll show you this room. It's pretty nice. I'm staying at the Hilton Bonnet in Orlando and I am right against the window. The view is beautiful. Look at that view. I've requested a pool room so you can see the waterfall in the distance and humongous pool area. I feel so guilty for not being here with Ellie. I really miss her. But now I know that this place is here so that the next time we come to Disney, we are totally, totally staying at this hotel because so far I really like it. So here's the room. You've got a little comfy chair here. For some reason, they've given me two queen beds, but that's fine. Standard amenities here. I like the artwork. That's pretty. Uh, a very modern lamp. This is great. They have a coffee maker, which is perfect. Some water. Nice TV. Let's see if there's a fridge. Yep. Fridge here, and it's empty, so that's fine. There's a little gift shop downstairs so I can get some snacks. Then there is this lovely full-length mirror. Hello. I tried to do an outfit of the day, guys. Traveling in white is not an easy feat, but I managed to be pretty clean by the end of the journey. I just have a small coffee stain in my knee, but you can't really see it. And I like this outfit a lot. I might rinse out the shirt so I can wear it because I also got a little salad dressing stain here. I need a bib. Here's the bathroom. Let's have a look. Great, they know me well. Nice makeup mirror, this is awesome. Let's see if they've got a seat. No, they don't have a seat for doing your makeup, but at least they have a mirror. Uh, yeah, I like the lighting, it's very, lots of ambiance here. Toilet and the bath and standard shower. So yeah, this is really cute. This will do is the seventh floor. So this is what it looks like. I again got the upgrade so that I can get the pool view. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna relax and unwind, take a chill pill and um, I'll check in with you guys later. Good morning guys. So this is my first full day here in the hotel. Um, I just got ready. I'm gonna go down to eat some breakfast. And then you're gonna head to the pool. The weather is looking a bit, it's not necessarily sunny, but actually in Florida, it's a blessing in disguise because the sun can be lethal. So um, yeah, I'm actually glad it's not too sunny. I just was wearing my sun, I was just wearing my sunglasses because I don't want to forget them. So this is my um, poolside outfit. This poncho, tunic thing I love. I picked this up last year from Portobello Market in London when we went on our family vacation to London and then underneath I have um, this tassel sort of sundress and my flip-flops there and the hair is super curly I just have it back in a clip this is my beach hair. 
And of course my sunnies, which are here now, and my earrings. I only carried this one pair of earrings for the whole trip because they are white and they go with everything. So um, I'll just show you what's inside my beach bag. Here it is over here. And I just have this cute little scarf, although it doesn't really go with what I'm wearing today. It's probably just a bit clashy, so I'm going to take that off. And I just have my handbag with my valuables and my sun hat. So I'm packing pretty light, and I'm sure they're going to have uh, towels by the beach. And so this is the total outfit here. As you can see, it's very chilled, very comfy. I love these bright tassels. They're just so much fun. Oh, I'm forgetting my book. I'm reading this book here by Karen Tanabe called The Gilded Years. It's really good. It's about a woman who passes for white and she goes to Vassar College in the early 1900s and she's fallen in love with an aristocratic son and she's terrified of him finding out her secret so I'm gonna see how this finishes snakes and alligators It's pretty though. I'm just leaving now because I'm gonna go and get changed. But it's super exciting. I'm so happy to be here. It's all a buzz. And I love meeting other people from my tribe who are all interested in doing the same thing <laughs> I'm interested in doing. And everyone knows the deal. And so when they see someone talking to a camera, people totally know what you're doing. And that's why I love going to conferences about people who vlog. Very cool. Hey guys, just wanted to come on and show you my blog her outfit of the day. So I'll start with the shoes. These are the shoes um, I showed you earlier in the vlog. They are from Payless. This dress I've had since last year. I've never worn it. It's like really fun fit and flare skater dress. I think it's pretty cute and it's perfect for Orlando. It's just bright and bold but fun. And then on my lips is Milani Pink Rage and the same earrings I've been rocking all week. So I'm just going to grab my mulberry bag and I'll head downstairs and check in.
keynote. We're so excited this day has finally arrived and to see you all here. Um, and like I said, I'm the co-founder of Blogger, which as most of you should know by now, is part of the She Knows Media family. So I'm Philip Yalton, I'm the CEO at She Knows Media, and as Elisa said, this is our, actually our third year producing Blocker since Blocker and She Knows came together and joined forces, and I'm very proud to say that the uh, event keeps getting better and better. So um, none of this would be possible without, first, our amazing staff, uh, and more about this in a minute. Um, second, our incredible vo uh, volunteers, and dozens of volunteers. I think it resonate with pretty much everybody in the room and everyone in the Blocker community. We're going to start with, or storytelling will be pervasive across everything that we um, that we cover. All of our speakers have either driven, they've driven passion, profit, next coming up with Ty and Gabby and Anastasia. <clears throat> they've changed their lives, they've changed other people's lives, they've gotten over adversity largely and through storytelling. So I think that's something that all of you do on a daily basis. Comfortable in their seat, so have your back to your seat chair so that you can kind of really engage with the floor so you can feel everything your body is doing. I'm gonna give you a few seconds. For this weekend, um, I really want all of the energy because I'm really, really, really stoked about this panel that we're about to have in this conversation because it's personal to me. How many of you consider yourself passionate? Uh huh, I figured as much. Um, I am very passionate as well, but I'm also a firm believer that passion is not enough, right? In order to build something, in order to make something tangible, humongous, build bi businesses and enterprises, it takes a lot, a lot of work. So I'm excited about a switch line and so many other things. You touched the neck about disruption and disrupting yes. what you did. Anastasia, let's, let's hear from you. How did you really come to identify your brand voice? I mean, you were obviously surfing and that was something that you did professionally yeah. from a very, very young age. Yeah, so I started surfing when I was about five years old. And yeah, when I first started surfing, you know, um, and it still very much is, it's a male-dominated sport. And I was one of the first females to Chelsea Clinton is the vice chair of the Clinton Foundation. She focuses her programs on addressing important health issues. She is a mother. She is also an author of books for young readers that addresses, addresses female empowerment and telling kids that they can make a difference. But like Cecile, she advocates for women and young girls. And she's continuing her family's legacy of public service. Please join me in welcoming my good friend Cecile Richards and the wonderful Chelsea Clinton. afternoon uh, talking about what Planned Parenthood actually does because I think there uh, is a big misconception about what Planned Parenthood does and what Planned Parenthood is to millions of women and families across our country and why it is such an essential part of our uh, healthcare ecosystem and why it is at the center of not only um, standing up for, for women but also families, standing up for our reproductive uh, rights and, and economic justice. So I just am so thrilled to be here with one of my great uh, heroes, Cecile Richards, and uh, listen to her uh, share with us a little bit about kind of what Planned Parenthood is and why it is uh, so deserving of our support, particularly at this moment in time. Yeah, thank 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Chelsea. Uh, and it's great to be here. Great to be your vlogger. And uh, they were, I mean, as I say to Chelsea, women are leading the resistance in this country. So it's so great to be here. I'll tell you a tiny bit about Planned Parenthood, but my friends from Southwest and Central Florida Planned Parenthood are here with Barbara and Rebecca. Thank you, thank you for what you do for women and men and young people in Florida every day. Um, so and we have a few minutes left, and I know we want to talk about what um, we think people really can do yeah. at this moment. And certainly, uh, running for office is is part of that. Voting in every election. Um, is part of that. I think that's hugely important. I, I live in uh, New York City. We have a city council. Like, oh yeah, good. I'm glad since we now are going geographically for my fellow New Yorkers. Um, and we have city council elections later this year. Um, and every election really, really matters. Um, whether we're focused on kind of climate change because like recycling happens at the local level, we're focused on criminal justice and this huge um, implications. Um, as to who is elected at the local, state, and federal level, as we're clearly seeing with our current attorney general. Um, and so I just think that is a hugely important part of this. It is also not the only part of this. Um, and so I know, Cecilia, you wanted to share a few thoughts about what, and what um, people can do to continue to positively pressure the political process while also engaging in it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm glad you then started with voting because I do think we have a whole generation of folks who probably are kind of discouraged about whether voting matters, and we have to demonstrate that it does. It's the thing that makes the most difference about what kind of life you get to live as the folks in government. So, as I say, you know, marching, great, and the women's marches were unbelievable. I mean, something I think none of us have ever, ever forget. Um, going to town hall meetings, great. In pink, pink hats, great. Voting, uh, absolutely, essential. absolutely um, essential. And in that, I want to say um, something just because, to, just for the record, that in this last election, as discouraging as it was for, for a lot of us, I just really, really want to shout out women of color because they did their part. And that was I'll let you have, but I just want to say, I mean, not only did women of color do their part, and they helped elect President Obama for two terms and did their part there, but now it's time for the rest of us to do our part as well. So it's not just an acknowledgement, it's a call to action. Um, filled with writers who are telling amazing stories of families and communities and people all around the world. So often, the stories you tell are about people overcoming adversity. All of us face hardship in our lives. The question is how we chart our path forward and make the most of option B. Two years ago, when my husband Dave passed away suddenly, I found that writing really helped. I kept a journal for many, many months, something I had wanted to do before but never knew how to do. And at the end of Shelah Shame, which is the Jewish period of mourning for a spouse, I shared on Facebook how I was feeling. And I almost did it because it was so raw and personal. But I just felt so isolated after Dave died that I figured it might make things better and was unlikely to make things worse. And when I shared and opened up, what I got was just an outpouring of support, not just for me, but for other people. People posting about the hardships in their lives, and then other people posting about theirs. Everyone showing how sharing can really help. You are part of those larger conversations every single day. The conversations that help us share who we really are, including the moments that are hard, and provide support for others who are going through adversity. So excited to be here. I can't see all of you, but it looks like a very big uh, room. So uh, you guys just heard from two women who are passionate about women's health. Um, and we, the three of us on stage, are also passionate about women's health. And we're going to talk about something else, another part of women's health that is also political and also really important to talk about and no one ever does. 
which is sex and pleasure. So, um, enjoy. so that's the keynote. Done. Hey guys, so I'm back in my room. I am so glad to have a room because although I like conferences, I find them to be very overwhelming very quickly. I don't know what it is. I love being there, but sometimes it's just too many people for me and I can't wait to just get some alone time again. So I don't know. I guess I'm an introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert. So um, we did get these really good um, goodie bags. It says need vitamin C, which is very cute. So let's see what's inside. Okay. So we've got toys. Looks a bit battered, but um, yeah, cool. Bladder supports. Not sure I need these just yet, but you know, time's a ticking. We're all getting older, so I'm not hating on the poise. Um, Dramamine, I know this is one of the blog her sponsors. This is for motion sickness. Uh, this is cute. This is Florida Amazing Orange Juice. I'm sure it's like an antibacterial soup. Wow. Uh, Slossa? Huh. The gourmet topping for everything. I've never heard of Slossa. It's gluten free. And um, I wonder what's in it. So it's cabbage, sugar, mustard, salt, turmeric, paprika, peppers. I guess you could just put this on like all of your sausages and stuff. Smarty Pants Probiotics. Uh, salmon Creations from Starkist. Well, that's nice. It's a bit of protein on the go. Um, a t-shirt. I have one hand so I can't open it, but I know it says healthy something. Uh, I don't really know what that is. Go Red Yellow Knights Medieval Times. Okay. Um, don't really know what to do with that. Got some Vagisil. Whoa, they're really all about the you know, lady parts. Um, so this is Intimate Wash pH Balance, and here you've got 
personal lubricant and vaginal moisturizing gel. Thanks. Uh, we've got some fruit shoot juice. Don't know what this is. It's uh, something. Oh, it's a USB stick. That's handy. I'm sure it's like a mini charger stick. That's cool. And then just lots of cards. For you to read through some paperwork. For you to read through. And what's this? Make more money here by partnering with Elfster. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I'll look into Elfster, whatever Elfster is. So that's the goodie bag from Blog Her this year. I'm going to have some food now. Maybe um, have something delivered to the room. Or I might go down to the restaurant. Most likely I'll go down to the restaurant um, now or maybe in five minutes and just sit at the table and wait for my group to join me. Hey guys, I just got back from um, the little networking party and I am exhausted. I completely forgot to vlog. I wasn't really sure if I could break out my camera, um, you know, because it's people I've just met and I don't want to necessarily put my vlogging camera in front of their faces. I don't know if everyone's comfortable in front of the camera, so I just wanted to respect that and not be too awkward. But it was a really lovely evening. I met some really nice bloggers and um, it's a great event. So glad that I've come, but I'm actually really happy I've done just the one day. I'd probably have to work up my tolerance to do the whole three days. I'm not really quite there yet because I still get very, um, it's all a bit full on, just, you know, all the people and stuff. I think I'm kind of more of a quiet soul, <laughs> believe it or not. So I'm just glad that I was able to come out and do this. It's amazing. My family is very supportive. My husband is looking after my daughter along with my mom back home. And I'm incredibly lucky to have that support for me to come out and enjoy this time alone to pursue my own interests which is blogging so that's such a blessing and I just wanted to shout them out and tell them that I love them and appreciate them so much so I hope you guys enjoyed my footage of blogger 17 leave me some comments below don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching bye so I am in such a rush as usual we're heading out to get on a boat we're going to the Statue of Liberty um, and we need to leave now. So